Okay, so now we've got GIF TCP up and running and we've installed hacks. We can add some of the other things that we need. So one of the integrations we're going to need is the Octopus Energy. So I search for Octopus and I've got Octopus Energy here. <clears throat> and we need to install this. So I think the download button is just below here. And I'm going to download and we're going to select the latest version. That's all good. And hopefully this will now download and install and then I'll need to configure it. Okay, so the download should have finished. Now I've got a pending restart um, to add that. So I have to go and then go restart. And I'll just pause the video while my system restarts. Okay, Home Assistant has restarted. So hopefully now we have um, an Octopus Energy, um, sorry, not on the add-ons, on devices and services. Where's our Octopus Energy? Um, let's see if it appears here. Octopus Energy, there we go. So now I need to add it. So now I'm going to have to fill in my API ID, my account ID, my mini refresh rate. I can just leave that as one. Uh, energy price cap I'm not going to worry about. So I'm just going to fill this in, obviously not on the video because I'm going to accomplish my API key and then hit submit. Okay, uh, so that's been submitted and now it's picked up my export meter, my electricity meter, my gas meter and the fact that I've got a charger, this is Octopus Intelligent essentially. Um, just point out, if you don't know what your API key is, you need to go into your Octopus, um, go into your account, um, and then your personal settings, and then select the developer API area, and it'll allow you to copy and paste it into there. So now I've got Octopus Energy, I end up with my different devices, and you can see, for example, my electricity meter is now going to tell me how much I've spent so far and uh, also what the current rates are, um, which is uh, which is good. So that's the um, current accumulated. Um, and here we're going to show the current rate, for example. And you can see also it's going to show what the rates are at night as well as in the day because I'm unintelligent. So there we go. Um, Okay, so I'm now going to add app daemon, which is needed by Predbat. So I'm going to go to, <coughs> keep me off on the wrong one, devices and services, add integration. Nope, not under that one. So it must be under add-ons and the add-on store. And there it is, app daemon. Always get the add-ons and, and the device integration mixed up. So install app daemon. This should be nice and quick. Okay, I'll turn on Watchdog and then we'll go to the configuration. I don't think there's anything that we specifically need to do in here um, at the moment. So hopefully that shall just start and then we'll see whether it gets going. Good. Um, there is a web UI for App Demon, but I haven't really used it for anything. If you open it there, maybe it's not started yet. Um, um, but uh, let's have a look at the log and we can see that App Demon is running. So that is good. Okay, we're going to need to add Solcast as well to get our solar estimates. So I think. That is also in hacks. Um, so custom repositories. I think it's an integration. So I'm gonna pull up the repository and I will download it. Since we're going to have to restart for this anyway, I think I'm going to also add in the Apex charts at the same time. Let me see if I can find those. Apex charts home assistant. And then this looks like the repository. So I can go back into 
tax, system repository, and this one is actually Loveface, I think. Mm -hmm. That it's actually saying it's already in the store. I shouldn't have added a custom one. I should have just gone for Apex charts and I'm searching. Yep. And it should be a front end. Apex charts card, there we are. This is the one, so I shall download it. And there we go. It's downloaded. Restart the browser, and I've still got from hacks pending restart, so I'm going to do that now. Okay, I managed to restart now. So let's um, see whether we can find Soulcast. There we are, so the PV forecast. I'm going to type in my API key and hit submit there, which I'm going to do while paused for obvious reasons. So I also click the disable API polling because new Soulcast accounts only get 10 polls a day, so you need to manually um, do the polling in an automation, which I'll do next. So you can see it's added by um, Roof now. And um, <clears throat> Uh, and so that's um, available. And I've got one service with the forecasts in. So I've got forecast today, forecast tomorrow. So that, that's all looking good, um, nicely set up. So and I just need to set up an automation for this now. So let's do the automation next. Automations and scenes. I'm going to create a new automation and I'm going to trigger on some sort of time pattern so maybe we could do it at something like 4 a.m for example and we could do another um, time pattern trigger on the fourth hour and this would be on say lunch time and then have another trigger on the time pattern and maybe i'll add it at some um, 11 o'clock at night and then my action is going to be to call the service and my service I need to find the Soulcast update service there we go and then I'll save that automation and I'm going to call it Soulcast update update Soulcast prediction during the day slash night okay so that's my Soulcast update service. So that will run three times a day. You can obviously do it more if you like. This is just an example. So it's been run never. If I want to check it works, let me just run it now. And then if you click traces, call service update and finish. So that's happened. And if I go back to my um, devices and service and find Soulcast and I find the entity then you can see my API hold has changed so yes it's updated good right here comes the next exciting bit we're actually going to install Fredbat now so I just found the address of the repository here um, which is right there. So I want the main root of it. I can go into CAX and I can add a custom repository. Ah, but I haven't enabled App Demon yet. So first I need to go into the, the um, settings for hacks and, um, and change that before I'm going to be allowed to add it. 
that just found why I need to do that. I need to go to settings, devices and services, and I need to actually find hacks, and then I need to go configure, and then I can enable app daemon. And then I can turn that on. And now, hopefully, when I go back to hacks, integrations, and custom repositories, and I put the repository in, I can select app daemon, and then I can add it. And now that will get downloaded and installed for us. Okay, so that's added Predbat. Unfortunately, my Raspberry Pi crashed at this point. Um, that's why I stopped using it and moved to the PC. Maybe I've got faulty hardware, I'm not sure. But anyway, there it is. Hopefully, if I go into the file editor now, and have a look in, I will find app daemon and then apps. And no, it doesn't seem to be there yet. I must have missed a step then. Integrations, custom repositories, red bat. Let me just click on this. I forgot to download it, I think. I need to click download and I'll select the latest version. So once this is downloaded, you'll get new versions will appear in the hacks page, but you won't see anything else much in hacks. So like I said, go back to the file editor, have a look in app theme and apps, app red, and then config. And this is your apps.yml, which you need to configure. So I think I've been through this a little bit before, but these should work out of the box with um, yeah, with GiveTCP. Um, so I've got one inverter, I've got the rest mode enabled. So all of these aren't actually needed in rest mode. My inverter limit is the maximum AC rate of my inverter. I'm going to change that to 3600 to match my inverter. Um, but this is the sole car settings, which should be correct. Car energy, so I've actually got a wall box. I need to install the wall box add on as well to make this work. But let's just leave that a second. Um, and then it will run, then that will kind of spring to life. Also, for Octopus Intelligent, I need to install the Intelligent plugin. Obviously, not everyone has that. And it should pick up my Octopus rates from import and export. If I didn't have Octopus, I could comment these out and I could fill the rate times myself manually. Days previous, so that would be seven days in the past. I'm going to set this to one because I don't have any data in here. It's only going to start working tomorrow. But uh, there we go, forecast hours and things I won't change. I'm not going to change any of the scalings, so I think that's the majority of it. I'm going to save that. Okay, I'm just going to take you through the app daemon configuration process. This has changed slightly since they um, adjusted app daemon. So after you've installed it, you need to change the config with file editor. Unfortunately, the configuration's moved, so the first thing you need to do is go to settings add-ons, file editor, if you haven't got file editor, remember to install it. Then in the file editor, in the configuration tab, there's something called enforced base path. Make sure you turn this off, otherwise you won't be able to see the app daemon config. Now, when you go to file editor, what you'll find is that you can go all the way back here and you'll see this add-ons config directory. You won't see that unless you turn off the enforced base path. And then you're going to see app daemon here. Ignore this above. This is nothing to do with the current um, prep bat. This is an add-on that I'm working on. Under app daemon, you'll find the app daemon.yaml. So here, you need to change this as it comes out of the box. So the first thing is your location doesn't really matter. Um, for the, It's not being used in these apps anyway. The time zone does matter. Make sure you set that correctly. If you don't set that correctly, there's going to be problems with the charging and discharging times in Prebat. So obviously I'm in Europe, London, but obviously set it to your own time zone. This thread duration warning threshold that I've set is just to get rid of some warnings to say things are taking too long. It's not important, but you can set it. What is really important is this app dir setting. Notice it's the same level as these other settings in App Daemon. It's not indented among, inside this. And you need to set this to Home Daemon, Home Assistant, App Daemon, Apps, or wherever you find your normal configuration directory 
for, for Home Assistant and then the App Demon Apps directory. This is really important if you're going to use hacks to install Prebbat that you get that in the right place. Um, this URL I haven't changed. Um, the logs, if you add this, you can actually keep a full log file at Predbat somewhere, which you can use to upload if you've got issues and to look at. So I've got logs, main log, file name, and I've put this again in the app daemon directory, the same one here, appdaemon.log. I've set my log, files, log size quite big. You don't have to set it that big, it'll rotate amongst multiple logs anyway, but this is basically like almost a day's worth. The other thing was there's a line here that said secrets. I've deleted that because I'm not using secrets through App Demon. If you do need it, then remember to set it to the Home Assistant secrets directory because it'll be set to the wrong place. Once you've saved that, that's all set up in the right place and it should be able to find Redbat, which would live in the App Demon directory if you've installed it through hacks. So, uh, so when you go back up to um, Home Assistant directory, once AppDemon is running, you'll find the log file here. Um, so in the AppDemon directory, that's the one we put it in, you'll see the AppDemon log, the rotated ones, dot one, dot two, and dot three are the older logs, and then the apps directory. So open AppDemon.log, you can see what Probat's been up to, you can see the time, and um, and what's happening so if you scroll to the end that's the latest obviously check that it's now that is about now it's 12 o'clock on the 30th and you can see it's just run and i can't see any errors in there so that's good and then if i go into the apps directory i can see um back red and you can see the redbat.py and the config directory with the apps.yaml which you obviously have to configure the other thing you'll see here, just in the Home Assistant directory, it should create something called Prebbat Dashboard.yaml. And this YAML is actually the example dashboard, which you can cut and paste into an entity list. And this will have all the entities that have been created in the current mode of Prebbat. If you turn on expert mode, you'll get more than if you don't. So, um, with that in mind, that shows that App Demon is all running, and then hopefully, when you go to when you look at Prebbat, you can actually see the status is idle, and so it's working. If you get this message, you've either not edited it apps.yaml and removed the template and set it up properly, or you need to restart App Demon if you've just done a hacks install. Notice in the attributes, it also says when the status was last updated, so that's now, so we know it's running. If it's really old, then maybe it's not been working correctly. It should update every five minutes, and it shows you the current version. Okay, thanks, then. I'm going to go and have a look at the logs. So system, logs, and then app demon. And we're going to see whether it's going to work. There was a bit of a crash here before. They didn't read the rest data, but that may have been when things were just starting up. So maybe this time around it will do. You can see it started up after I saved apps.yaml and it's updated the configuration. Let's do another refresh. So actually I've got some problems here now. Things aren't, everything is not working. Um, we are getting some connection errors. I don't know what this is about yet. I need to have um, a look and see. Okay, it looks like the rest isn't working. I think I know why. If I go back to my file editor and pull it up, you see when I configured my rest, it says home assistant.local. This is home assistant2.local. I'm actually only using one in first, so the second one doesn't matter. Let's try saving that and see if we get any better. Let's go back to my logs, and then I shall have a look at captain.log, and then let's see, just give it a bit of a second, refresh the log, nothing yet. And look, this is looking better now, better using that. And we're starting to run. You can actually see the things happening in Prebbat and it's making some predictions. It's creating lots of entities here. So that is all looking quite positive.
course, this is going to be bad for me because I've got a second version of Redback running on the other machine, so I'm going to eventually turn this up. But this is all run nicely. So that's really good. So the next step is to add some Apex charts. So if you go back to the repository here and you open example chart, this has got all the charts in. See, it says multiple charts, please copy. So I'm going to take the battery prediction chart, which is the most important one, the first one here. And I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to copy all the code from there. I'm going to go back to the Home Assistant here. I'm going to edit the dashboard. I'm going to add a new card. Remember, I installed the Apex charts earlier. So these are there. I'm going to go Control A, select all, Control V, paste. Everything's pasted in there. I'm going to save it. And we have something. Now, the reason this looks very odd is because I've got no historical data yet. So there's no load appearing. So I have a chart, but I didn't have some load. And we'll see that fairly shortly. Let's ignore the cost chart for now. Let um, We've got the energy rate chart. Let's add that one. Let's go to here. Edit dashboard. Add card. Apex chart card. Save. That's my energy rate. So that all looks good. And let's go back down here. Let's go to the data prediction. This is where we'll see the missing load. I'm going to copy this. There we go. Add card. Apex charts. Select. Paste. Save. Right. So you can see on the data prediction that load is zero. And that's because I now have no data because this is the new system. Once it's been running a day, this is going to actually start working. In the meantime, Let's go back and have a look at some of the example dashboard information. So this is all the switches and toggles that Redbat supports. I'm going to copy all of that. I'm going to edit the dashboard. I'm going to add a card here. I'm going to go for an entities card. I'm going to show it in the code editor, and I'm just going to paste this over the top of it. This is going to add everything in Redbat, which is an awful lot of stuff, and you want to customize it. But you can see now they're all appeared, and that's what we wanted. So calculate best is on, calculate charge all, calculate discharge is actually also set. So everything is turned on and I'm going to turn this off for now. So I don't want the set SOC. I don't want to set the reserve. Um, I don't want to set the charge window or the discharge window. And that's because I don't have enough data and I've got another system running. So I don't want any of those but my basic setup is now complete the only other thing i need to do is try and add in the um octopus intelligent plugin and the wallbox plugin let's see if i can find those in here octopus no octopus um intelligent plugin isn't there so i'm gonna have to go and find it so if i search for it i found it it says i need to add it to hack so i'm going to copy that I'm going to go to hacks, I'm going to add custom repository, and there's an integration, and I shall add it. That's pretty quick, it's been added now, which was intelligent repository, and I'm going to download it, and there we go. So that will make my intelligent work correctly. And then the last thing I'm going to want is the wall box. So I'm going to go for my wall box plugin for home assistant. Let's see if I can find it. And it looks like it's the standard home assistant one. So I might be able to go settings, add on, not add on, sorry, devices and services. Let's see if I can find wall box here. So here's wall box. And I just need to fill in my information and submit, and that'll be there. I'm not going to do that right now because this is a temporary system that I set up to demonstrate this. But I think that's all in terms of how to set up from a clean home assistant, setting up Redbat and getting it up and running for the first time. I hope you found it useful. Um, please give some um, feedback. Um, thanks very much.